Hello everyone, my name is Simone Feast and I'm a freshman at Spelman College and today I'll be interviewing Miles Cardenas. Miles is a land development manager at McKinley Homes. Miles is also a member of the NAHB, which stands for National Association of Home Builders. The NAHB Student Chapters is a program dedicated to enriching the educational experience of construction students by providing them with NAHB membership, access to educational programming, networking opportunities, and firsthand exposure in the building industry. Hello, Miles. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Good. My first First question is what initially drew you to this career path? Uh, so I originally wanted to um, go to school for architecture and um, in making that decision to get into construction management, I really wanted to focus on um, just the overall construction. Um, overall goal was to hopefully one day build my own house from the ground up and I you know, talked to a few mentors and um, they, they told me that going the construction management route would, would be the best route for me. So I uh, went the construction management route and um, I have loved it ever since I've I made the decision to, to take on that as a major in college. Wow, that's amazing. So what made you um, come up with the idea of building your own home? Because that's, that is awesome. <laughs> Um, so it's something that I had always thought about growing up as a kid that I wanted to you know, get into some sort of building science, um, engineering, architecture or construction. Um, definitely wanted to one day, one day build my own home. You know, always looked at certain things as it relates to architecture and buildings very closely um, and just fell in love with it. So it was one of those things where one day I, I promised myself that I would build my own house and um, I definitely, definitely will be doing that. I don't know when, but very soon, hopefully. Yes, sir. Manifesting it. It will get done. It will get done. Yes. <laughs> My next question is, what high school courses or college courses have you found to be most applicable slash important for your occupation? Or which courses do you wish you should have taken? Yeah, so uh, I had the great opportunity in high school to go to a career academy um, in Rockdale County here in Georgia. Um, they have a uh, they have a career academy called Rockdale Career Rockdale Career Academy, and that's where I took up an architecture um, pathway and and originally started my architecture or my love for architecture and wanted to get into it in college in high school. Um, so I took it, took that up in high school, really, really enjoyed it. And then obviously in college, I switched to construction management. And I think the big thing for me was um, just getting into the major and understanding how things work. It's more so a project management base, but uh, really fell in love with um, taking a couple classes on the land development side when it came to market analysis and understanding markets and, and obviously the financial portion. So and then um, I, in college, I, I took up an internship or several internships, and that helped me out with um, my college experience and my work experience and, and really, really helped me springboard into my career after college. So um, just that, that internship experience, the experience in the classroom in college, and obviously the jump start in high school were extremely important um, in, to where I am today. Thank you so much. You said something really, really important. You said internships. So my uh, next question is, what internships or apprenticeships have helped you specifically prepare for this career? Yeah, so um, actually, when I was in college, I participated in the National Association of Home Builders Student Chapters Residential Construction Management Competition. It's a lot to, to say, but um, I, I participated <laughs> for three years. And as part of the competition, they have a, a career fair. So at the career fair, I met uh, with Ryland Holmes at the time. I believe it was 2014 or 2015, one of my first years doing the competition and um, contacted them. They had an office here in Atlanta. I was interning in the commercial sector at the time and uh, was really intrigued with getting into residential and land development. And, and Ryland um, became Cal Atlantic Group and the following summer after talking to Cal Atlantic in, in 2016, I actually started my internship in land development at Cal Atlantic Homes in the Atlanta office. Um, and that really that really helped me with uh, where I am today. I'm actually still 
still uh, working for some of the same people that I worked for during the first year of my internship here at McKinley that were at Cal Atlantic when I started. So um, it's definitely a full circle moment and it's been um, one of the most important things that I've ever done while being in college for sure. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. How did you engage with the NAHB as a student and how is that different as you engage with them now as a new professional? Yeah, so as a student, um, we, uh, being involved with NHB student chapters, we uh, were given who our liaison was for the state of Georgia, the greater Atlanta home builders, the greater Atlanta area. Um, and that really started with that um, mentorship, you know, getting to know many of the members within the greater Atlanta home builders association while being a student in college, really talking to them getting to know what they do, getting involved with the association on top of being involved at the national level. But that local and national level um, exposure really, really helped me out with, you know, really seeing what it's like to be in the industry. You know, there are a lot of people out there doing amazing things in many different ways, and you know, they all have different stories, and um, they all have different ways that they make impacts, and that was extremely important and my growth process. So being involved with the National Association of Home Builders locally and um, nationally, you know, as a student getting involved with the competitions and you know, meeting some of the leaders at the, the national level and obviously at the local level is extremely important for me, for sure. Yes, sir. I'm just curious. Can you describe what those competitions were like as um, a student, a part of the NH NAHB um, chapter program? Yeah, so um, not often do you get the opportunity to work on a real scenario, a real project, but um, each year we were given a project that was you know, a real life project, something that was going on in whatever state the project was in. Um, and it was you know, in, in progress, you know, something that was actually happening. So we were given a project scenario um, and what we were asked to do was to come up basically with a um, a to Z analysis of the project, a market analysis, a uh, you know, product creation or you know, product review, um, you know, developing site plans, developing the financials and estimates and schedules and market analysis and, and sales and marketing strategies. Um, and then obviously green building initiatives. It was just the whole, the whole gamut and it really helped me with stepping into land development because a lot of the aspects that were introduced in that competition are aspects that um, that I currently utilize today in this role. Uh, so that was extremely important for me to get a, a glimpse of what this industry was like from a different perspective. And then it, it ultimately helped me uh, with making the decision to jump into land development as an intern um, and then in residential as a whole. So it was an amazing competition, a ton of students you know, like-minded students from construction-related programs across the country, four-year, um, two-year programs in high school kids. So it was extremely, uh, it was an honor. It was an eye-opening experience. Um, and, you know, I wouldn't have, wouldn't have traded that three years of competing in that competition for anything else to really help me out. Yes, sir. Wow. So would you say networking is very, very important um, in your career? Extremely. Um, so as a young professional and, and being involved with the young professionals group here in Atlanta with the Greater Atlanta Home Builders Association, we preach that a lot to young professionals. Um, obviously, there are some some college kids and some high school kids that we speak to as part of that program. And it's just letting them know that getting involved and networking are um, the two key pieces of building your career. Um, it's extremely important to, to reach out to talk to people who are in the industry, to listen to their stories, um, and to allow yourself to just be a sponge and be immersed into those experiences and what people can teach you. Um, it's, it's not about what you know more so than who you know in, in, in the construction industry. So you know, networking is a big part of what we do in construction. And we try to make sure, and I try to make sure that when talking to people about networking, and outreach and getting involved that's extremely important to do, especially in this industry, because um, there's so many people um, that can help you in whatever you're looking to do and, and talk to you about what options there are, because there's so many ways to do things. And, and obviously those connections can turn into partnerships and opportunities for sure. Yes, sir, you are absolutely correct. <laughs> 
Okay, so what has your participation in NAHB impacted your career success? Yeah, so, um, you know, as a, as a student, like you mentioned earlier, as a student, it's been different as a young professional. Um, so as a student, it was more so about, you know, getting involved, you know, learning at the, the local level and the national level from a student standpoint. Um, but as you grow into, you know, graduating from college and being a young professional, the experience is a little different. Um, you know, you're, you're more so involved with, you know, advisory boards um, and opportunities with the IBS every year. It's just from a different perspective, you kind of get to see things from, you know, a, a wider scope than just as a student, because as a student, you're kind of looking at it from, you know, a, a very wide lens as trying to understand what the industry is like and what's what's involved and included in the industry. And then when you step out as a young professional and as a member, you really see, okay, what can I utilize, you know, in this industry that allow me to get a heads up, you know, what can I look out for? What are trends? So there's you know, a different experience with that, but being involved at the national level and, and being involved with NHB right now is um, such an eye-opening experience. Uh, so many different opportunities so many different people to meet, as, as mentioned earlier, with the networking piece. So it's really just been about how to, to really navigate through the industry, meeting other young professionals, um, meeting some people that have been in the industry for a while that have so much to teach um, and so much knowledge to, to you know, send over to the next generation. Because you know, as many of us have noticed as young professionals, the industry um, is, is an industry that is full of you know, an older generation that is looking to pass it down to the next generation to take over um, so that everything can keep rolling and, and things can continue to be promising for the future. So it's, it's so important to be involved right now, especially you know, at, at this point in my career um, and being involved with NHB has really helped me with that. Yes, sir. I agree with everything you just said. That's very important. Okay. Can you describe what your typical workday entails? Yeah, so the typical work day for me is uh, a little crazy, uh, but it involves, it really involves just making sure um, that I visit our, you know, visit our job sites, you know, make notes, make progress reports of where we are, where we need to be, um, you know, making sure that you know, we're keeping up with our weekly updates and, and what we have tracking on our schedules and making sure we're controlling cost and making sure that we're analyzing the details on the sites. Um, and then obviously making sure that that information gets relayed to our teams, um, our contractors, our trade partners, um, and then also our leadership uh, at McKinley Homes. So it's extremely important each day to really get out, really spend time on the jobs, talk to the trades, see what they're doing, um, see if there are any issues and how we can overcome those. And then you know, making sure that we're, we're meeting, meeting our goals and, and meeting, making sure we're, we're hitting progress reports and hitting schedules because um, it's extremely important. Um, a lot of what we do in construction is very time sensitive. Um, so paying attention to those details and following those steps um, is, is really what I do every day. Um, and then obviously there are some things that change from day to day. No day is the same, um, no issue is the same. So there's always something that's going on each day that's different than the last. Um, and it's that's one of the most fun things about what I do. It can be stressful, but it's definitely fun. Wow, so I just wanna pick up on um, one aspect of your answer. You said that every day is different in construction. So do you choose your schedule um, based on, I guess, whatever situation you're experiencing or do you have a set schedule but you have different experiences within that schedule, if my question makes sense? Um, so it's, it's different each day, so you know, Schedule could really change just based on what's going on. Um, you know, obviously, there are some things that come up, um, and there are some things that you have to handle. And, and sometimes your schedule may be different than what you originally set it out to be for that day. Um, but normally during the week, I try to make sure to schedule out. You no, know, on Monday, try to schedule out my week where I need to be. Schedule out meetings. Um, and for the most part, some things will go as planned. Sometimes they'll they'll be a little bit different, just depending on if there's anything that comes up that is extremely important that needs to be handled right away. Um, and sometimes there are things that are um, of that magnitude. So 
you know, I, I try to choose my schedule and plan my schedule accordingly um, for efficiency. But there are some things that need to be handled. And sometimes it just it just comes with it, you know, getting out there and making sure that you're doing what you need to do to be able to, to get the job done. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. My next question is, what aspect um, of this career that people would not expect? Hmm. The aspect <laughs> that people would not expect would be, um, I would say that, you know, it's really one of those things, it's hard to pinpoint because each each person's experience is different. Um, but it is one of those things where um, it's, as people know, it's, it's, a, it's a very team-like environment in construction. It takes teams to be able to get things done. Um, but there are certain things that you get experienced and exposed to in the construction industry. And I think one of the biggest things that some people get to experience, depending on what role they're in, and some people don't, is the, um, the influence that the governments have on what we do. Um, and being in this particular role in land development, I get involved with you know, zonings and certain things with municipalities and you know, plan submittals and so on and so forth and actually get to speak to, you know, get the opportunity to speak to councilmen and speak to city planners and city managers. Um, and that's one of the things that coming into it, you know, understanding that there is some form of politics involved in everything, um, but really getting into the weeds as it relates to, okay, you know, what do these municipalities have planned? How do our plans match up or how are they different than that? And, you know, how is that affected by how construction is moving forward in these particular areas or how is it affecting sales or what we're looking to do in those areas? And that's something that um, I don't think a lot of people really expect to think about just depending on what role they're in. And it was something that was very eye-opening for me as it relates to just seeing how much influence that had on everything that we do, for sure. Thank you so much. My last question for you today is what words of wisdom do you have for someone considering this occupation? Um, so the words of wisdom I would have for anyone considering real estate construction as a whole is to just really this this industry in this particular role is very people oriented. It's it's all about connections like we talked about networking, um, dealing with people, dealing with trades. You no, know, if, if you're a sponge and you're able to maneuver through um you know, the obstacles of being in this industry with things being time sensitive and things being very urgent. You no, know, it's, it's so important to understand that you have to go in with a mindset that you're open to learn, you're open to working with people, you know, you understand that things are going to change. It is an industry that is very um, fluent, so it changes all the time. Um, and, and my advice to someone would be to come in and just be willing to learn come in and be willing to talk to people, come in and be willing to network um, because building your experience in this industry starts with opening your mind to you know, understanding that there's so much to learn um, and there's a lot that you can do to grow. Um, there's people that are in this industry that have been in this industry for 20 plus years and they learn every day. And, and I've been in this industry for a, a short amount of time than that for sure. And I learn every day. Um, so it's one of those things where you just really have to be open. You have to be a sponge. You have to open your mind up to just all the possibilities. Um, and, and you can do it. It's, it's one of the industries that's very entrepreneurial. Um, you, you can get in this industry and, and make your own way and, and do your own thing and, and have a ton of success. And there's so many people who are a testament to that. Um, but you really have to get in and understand that there's so much to learn. And when you open up your mind to learning and meeting new people and understanding those things, you can really go far. And that would be, that would be my advice to someone who's looking to get into this industry. Thank you so much. That's just for life in general. Yeah, and internships. I, 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 we talked about that before, but I wanna stress the fact that anyone who is looking at getting into this industry, um, whether in high school, whether in college, internships and apprenticeships are so important. It's, it's really, viable in your experience to figuring out what it is that you want to do in this industry because there's so much 
um, that you can do. Um, but being involved in, in getting into those internships and apprenticeship opportunities and co-ops really provides you an opportunity to see what this industry has to offer you. And I think that that's another important thing that I would tell somebody that's looking to get into this industry. If you are in a position to where you can take advantage of one of those opportunities, please do. Um, and please, please try multiple things. Don't be afraid to you know, try different opportunities um, as you're going through the process. Um, because the more you learn and the more you have exposure to, the easier it is for you to make a decision on what you really want to do. Thank you so much. Um, and with that, um, thank you for joining us. And I hope you learned more about the NAHB. For more information, please visit the NAHB Q Career page and find out how NAHB can help you with your career development. Until next time, have a good week. Thank you, Ms. Thank you.